Okay, so here we have a quadratic function in standard form. f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. In this case, a not equal to zero. That statement is to make sure we have a quadratic function. If a is zero, we don't have the squared part, and then we just have a linear function. So, for a standard quadratic function, this is the standard form equation. From this equation, you can nicely get the vertex and the axis of symmetry, which really aids in graphing a quadratic function. And oftentimes, I'm going to be asking you to graph the quadratic function in addition to finding the vertex and the axis. So, let's do an example here. All right, identify the vertex and the axis, then graph f of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. So, the first order of business here is to change this form into standard form of the quadratic function. To do that, we first have to rearrange the equation, factoring out the 2. So I'm going to rewrite it, factoring out the 2 first. So, f of x equals 2 times the quantity x squared plus 4x. I notice 2 doesn't go into the 7, so I'm not going to use that 7. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to put a space here for a new number that we're going to find, plus a space for subtracting that new number, and the plus 7 that we didn't want to use. Now, what happens here when you're dealing with equations? You can't just go changing the value. So, if I want to add a number here so that I have a nice quadratic function that I can factor, I need to subtract the number over here so that adding a number and subtracting the exact same number doesn't change the value of the equation. It's making it look a little different so that I can get it in standard form. So here goes. How do I find that magic number? I'm sure you remember you take this 4, which is from the middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I put a 4 there. Now remember I said if you add a 4 here, you have to subtract a 4 over here. Hmm. Notice anything? You see this 2? 2 times 4? That's really an 8. That means I have to subtract 8, not 4. So be careful. That's one place where you would make a little error. All right, so we use complete the square to figure out perfect number there. Why? So that this trinomial can factor into a perfect square binomial. Here we go. I'm going to rewrite it to, and I'm going to write that trinomial in factored form. It's a binomial squared. Do you know what it is? You must know there's a plus in the middle x here, 2 here. Now, when we write the rest of this, let's combine like terms. So all we have is a minus 1. Now you'll notice I have standard form of a quadratic. What's nice about standard form is now I can find the vertex. Do you know what it is? You could pause the video for a minute, write it down, and then see if you get the same vertex that I get. I need to know the h and the k. Minus 2, minus 1. And the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. You notice anything interesting about the numbers that I wrote? This is plus 2. I wrote a minus 2. This is minus 1. I wrote a minus 1. You need to remember that. You need to remember that the h is always the opposite sign. And the k is the same sign as in the problem, as in the original problem. All right, so now I'm about ready to graph. One other thing that 
I want you to notice about the standard form of the quadratic equation is this number here. That A gives us some clues about the graph. And the two important pieces of information, A could be positive, which is greater than zero, or A could be less than zero or negative. And I have a little helpful hint I like to write next to those symbols to remind me what the curve is going to look like. When A is positive, I have a curve that holds water. I think of my curve as a goblet, and I have a glass of water. If A is negative, it doesn't hold water, so my goblet's upside down or empty. So, in this quadratic function, I know the vertex, I know the axis, and what kind of picture is it going to be? Hold water or not hold water? Hopefully, I figured out that it's going to hold water. So I always put a little clue here so that um, when I get my graph, I look and see if I came out with one holding water. If not, I go back and try and find a mistake. Now, another thing I like to do, this is only one point, and it's the point on the vertex, it's the vertex point, which is either the low point or the high point of the curve. So I like to pick a point close to the vertex so that I have another point to plot. So let's pick a point. Now, if negative 2 is my vertex, I want to pick a point very close to that. So I'm going to pick a point negative 1 and figure out the partner value that goes with that. So I go back here to the original. When I pick the point as negative 1, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1, times 2, which is 2, plus negative 1 times 8 is negative 8, plus 7. When I simplify all of this, I get 1. So when I plot negative 1, I should get the value 1. And hopefully, those points will start to give me a curve. So let's plot them and see what we get here. So let me put a little graph here. All right, right there. So we have a vertex, negative 2, negative 1. Over 2, down 1. There's my vertex. My axis, x equals negative 2, that would be this line here. Going up here. The axis is interesting because the parabola is the same on both sides. I could fold my paper on that axis and, and both sides should match up. All right, so I plotted my vertex. I got my axis there. Here's my pick a point. Negative 1, 1. Now, since I, my parabola is symmetric and I picked negative 1, negative 1, 1, I know that on the other side of this axis, one space over, I also go up to one, and I could connect that point and have my perfectly balanced parabola. So um, if I pick the point negative one, I can also pick the point negative three, and that should also come out to be a one if I plug it into the original equation, which is back here. You can test that on your own. I'm not going to do that. So, there we have um, the graph of the quadratic equation. Now, um, another thing that you sometimes have to do is find the intercepts. What are the x-intercepts of that graph? Um, and finding the x-intercepts is a good way to test test out to see if your, your graph you did with these points is in the right vicinity. So let's do find the x-intercepts here. All right, so find the x-intercepts. You take the original equation and set it equal to zero. So zero equals x squared, whoops, 2x squared plus 8x plus 7. And one way to find the intercepts is to factor. That doesn't work. A second way is to use the quadratic formula. Over 2a. 
So, what are the A, B, and C here? A is 2, B is 8, C is 7. So, minus 8 plus or minus the square root B squared, 64, minus 4 times A times C. So 4 times 2 is 8, times 7 is 56. Alright, all over 2A, which is 4. Now if I simplify that, I end up with, let's go over here, negative 8 plus or minus 64 take away 56 is 8, all over 4, minus 8 plus or minus 2, two all over 4, and at this point, I would use my calculator. Hopefully, you always have yours ready. So, we can find out exactly what that number is. So, minus 8. We'll do plus. Plus 2. Parenthesis. 2. Get that answer, divide it by 4, and I get at 0, I should be at negative 